Presbyopia is a fancy Greek word meaning the eye, eye disease of the old, the way in which old people see, which is what we would call, I guess, long sight. You must hold things far away from you to see them. And the existence of that disease is well known in ancient Rome, for example, if not long before. The solution that we now have for presbyopia is to use convex lenses in our spectacles. And one question is, if the Romans had lenses of some kind, and they surely suffered from presbyopia because they described this phenomenon, um, why didn't they use lenses the, the way we do to cure the problems of old age and the problems of long-sightedness? Um, what lenses are used for in ancient Rome is a matter of hot debate. Um, it seems clear that figured glass is used, for example, to burn things as a kind of burning glass to um, light fires and so on. It may well be possible that certain kinds of shaped glass or specially made quartz or crystal was used to magnify things. For example, it, it seems convincing to me at least that people who worked on wax seals, which are very finely, very precisely worked shapes, would have looked at them and of course checked them using something like a magnifying glass. And there's a lot of evidence from the ancient world that something like glasses were used roughly as shades, as sunglasses. So it's as though, first of all, human history gives us sunglasses, and only later does it give us spectacles. Why do you think that is? Why, why, why was there not a, this leap in imagination? Well, um, the fact that we don't have ancient Roman glasses to correct for the disease of old age is just another example, but I think it's a really good example of what it seems you need in order to develop a technology which works and deals with a particular problem. It's never just a question of having resources available, and it's never just a question of having the problem. What you tend to need is a whole network of precise techniques, demand, and reliable understanding coming together. The right model, I think, is a, is a kind of network model, something that ties together needs, knowledge, understanding, expertise, and so on. For example, what's the problem here? The problem is that old folk need help reading. Well, almost all the Roman authors who describe the problem of long sight um, then say, well, there's an obvious solution, which is to get your slave to read to you. And you, you might say, well, if you live in a society where you have slaves available who can be exploited like that, the urgent pressing demand to fix your optical problems with bits of shaped glass just isn't there. Even though the problem is there, the urgency of that problem isn't really felt. As far as we can tell, the first spectacles to correct these kinds of eye problems appear in Western Europe in the 13th and 14th century, the 1200s, the 1300s. They're well described by writers like Roger Bacon, Oxford philosopher and technician and mathematical expert, who recommends plano convex lenses. That's, that's to say lenses which are flat on one side and curved outwards on, on the other to correct precisely for the problem of long sight. And what's interesting again is once we get the first mentions of these and the first evidence that they exist in Western Europe in the M Middle Ages, they're very rapidly d distributed everywhere. So there's another really important aspect of the way in which I think glass and spectacles really symbolize a lot about the, the way in which cultures develop and modernize, which is that you start to see switch from luxury to commonplace. So in the ancient world, there are lots and lots of examples of beautifully figured pieces of glass and crystal and quartz. 
which people who find them have often said, oh, well, there you are, there's a lens, they must have used them to correct the diseases of the eye. But no, they're set in beautiful jeweled mountains, or they're carefully chased with gold. They're luxury goods, they're jewels. Whereas what you start to see in medieval Europe, Western Europe, is the very rapid diffusion of craft-made spectacles over relatively large section of society. And of course, the effects of that diffusion are pretty dramatic. What they mean is that very large sections of the population can continue to work and read and see until relatively late in life. And um, even with, by our standards, very low life expectancies, this means that the, as we're intellectually productive period for large sections of society just goes up and up and up pretty fast. A very large amount of crafts work is fine, precise, rather close up, and requires that extraordinary sort of hand-eye coordination, the manipulation of tools which we associate with the skilled artisan. Now, with the problem of long sight, if you have to hold something far away from you sim 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 simply to see it, that fine close-up work whether it's in making relatively luxury goods, metalworking, for, for example, or even what we would now call scientific goods, engraving scales, let's say. So marking a line and dividing it precisely. That's fine, close-up work. And having spectacles means you can go on working like that for years and years longer than you would be if you didn't have glasses. What that meant is that the accumulation of skill by the expert artisan and then its transmission to his juniors and his students would be more effective, would happen over a longer time period and therefore you get, I think, one factor which explains the extraordinary takeoff in simply the quality of artisan work and craft skills in the high middle ages. Pres Presbyopia is the problem that objects which are near to you are fuzzy and you just can't bring them to a focus. So the so solution is to shift the focal point of all the rays coming from objects relatively near. And the, and the way you do that is to introduce a lens in front of your eye. And the kind of lens you need is one which bends outwards. It's a convex lens, which are hard to make. Uh, from a piece of plain glass by grinding. It's extremely difficult to grind lenses of this shape, but it, it, with high skills and extreme care, it quickly becomes possible. One can either have a lens which is flat on one side and then curved, a plano convex lens of the kind that Roger Bacon and others describe in the um, uh, 13th century, or a biconvex one like this which is curved on both sides and, and which works extremely well so that objects which are um, nearby suddenly spring into focus and you no longer have to shift them out to where you, the focal point in, in your eye actually is. So what's, what's going on here at the kind of philosophical level is the understanding of technical objects as bits of machinery you can add to the body to make the body work better. And it seems to me back behind of the spectacles revolution of the Middle Ages is that understanding, what, what, what we call prosthetics. The, the lens is a kind of artificial limb. And the, and the idea that the weak, failing human body, which according to medieval writers is weak because Adam and Eve fell, that body can now be saved, regenerated, and made more productive, more angelic indeed, by simply strapping pieces of glass to, to your eyes. And that certainly drives forward the idea that instruments should be and can be used, if sufficiently carefully engineered, to turn us into more perceptive, longer-lived, more reliable agents. And, I, and so I think back behind of the spectacles change is a really profound change 
in the way in which human beings think about technology and the body. And I think that does contribute to the emergence of modernity. Okay. So myopia is the opposite of long yeah, I mean, so we, we, Shall I start with that? In contrast to long-sightedness, there's also short-sightedness, myopia. Myopia was known to the Romans too, and it's very well dis described. It's what I suffer from. And it's the fact that you can only see objects when they're relatively near to you. Here then, the, so the solution is to try and bring to a clear focus objects which are far away, and for that you need a concave lens which bends inwards on both sides so that rays which are coming in from far are brought to a, to a focus like that. Now the te technology for making a concave lens is relatively more straightforward. If you take a piece of flat glass and you start to um, grind it like this, the glass will gradually become curved. And this is relatively low-level technology. It's extraordinarily high-level technique. The difference between the device that you might use to make something like this and the skill with which you manipulate that device. So by the 16th and 17th centuries, when very, very fine lenses are being made indeed in Europe and, and elsewhere, we're dealing with manipulations of matter at a scale and precision which is the finest of which human beings are capable. Because with purely manual tools, barely gear-driven at all, you're trying to get really perfect geometrical curves on these lenses. So one of the forces then that drives lens grinding and lens making onwards is this demand for increasing precision and the control over rather difficult bits of stuff that you're trying to manipulate. Presbyopia is the disease of old age um, and it's long sight. We now correct for that with a convex lens, a lens which bends out, something like this, so that it curves outwards. This shifts the focus of all the light rays coming into the eye so that objects which are nearby appear clear and one doesn't have to hold them far away in, in order to see them. Now, lenses like that, which are made from essentially melting and forging glass balls, glass spheres, are relatively easy to make because one can make an outward curve relatively straightforwardly by polishing them up. Myopia, which is the disease of short sight, which is what I suffer from, is where things which are far away blur and fade into the background and um, it only very nearby objects appear clear. And the solution that we now have for myopia is to use concave lenses, lenses which bend inwards and um, which are extraordinarily difficult to make if one starts with a simple glass sphere like this. And one needs high precision tools and patience and extreme skill to correct for myopia. Whereas presbyopia can be relatively simply corrected for, as it was in medieval spectacles, using these glass spheres. It sounds convincing that if you have very high incidence of myopia, so large sections of the population are short-sighted, and it's also the case that correcting for short sight by making concave lenses is an incredibly difficult piece of technology. It seems right that um, developing that technology to solve that problem is going to be something which doesn't happen in that culture. What I wonder is what the priority is there. What's the order of causation? Um, Human ingenuity is universally distributed. Almost all cultures are as ingenious as each other. Um, and one needs to look at things like what kind of glass is available, what sort of glass is, is being used. Uh, don't forget, for, for example, that you don't have to make spectacles out of glass. There is quartz, crystal, and so on. So I think it's right that um, myopia is less easy to correct for with 
lenses because the lenses you need to correct for myopia are rather complicated to make in comparison with the nice spherical lenses that you can make for, to correct for long sight. But I need convincing about exactly how the technology is supposed to work there. Um, I think the answer will lie more in how people deal with glass and indeed probably how they think about sight than in whether or not it's difficult or not to make um, concave lenses.